Welcome to the TOAT session. The aim of this session is to raise awareness of diabetes and the development of foot complications, to discuss a preventative approach to diabetes foot care, to review top tips for foot care and for you to know how and when to self-refer to podiatry. Here are three questions for you to consider. Where do you go if you have a problem with your feet? Many people will go to their GP if they have a problem with their feet. The GP will assess their feet and, where appropriate, refer you to podiatry. But you can self-refer to podiatry and the number for the podiatry call centre will be provided at the end of this session. Who do you think should look after your feet? You are the best person to look after your feet. But if you have concerns about your feet, you should self-refer to podiatry. How do you think you can care for your feet? By carrying out daily foot checks and foot care is the best way to look after your feet. And we will discuss this later in the session. Foot screening should be done by a healthcare professional. You will be advised which risk category you are, such as low risk, moderate risk, high risk in remission, or active foot disease. The screening will be carried out by a healthcare professional who will firstly check your circulation. This is done by checking the pulses in your feet. They will then check the sensation, which is the feeling to your feet, by using a monofilament which is a small tool on the screen. They will also check for deformity in your feet and if you have any previous ulceration. When all of this information is put into the computer, the healthcare professional will inform you which risk category you come under. Low risk is where you have no complications to your feet and you would be able to self-manage your own feet. Moderate is where you have one complication. High risk or in remission is where you have more than one complication or where you have had a previous ulcer and active foot disease means you have an ulcer and will be referred to podiatry. The majority of patients with diabetes will fall into the low risk category. There are several complications that can affect your feet if you are diabetic. The first complication is neuropathy. This is where you have nerve damage to your feet, normally caused by long-term poor control of your diabetes. Symptoms of neuropathy are numbness, tingling or burning sensation, pins and needles or shooting pains. Patients with nerve damage will often say it feels as though their sock has crumpled underneath the ball of their foot or their feet feel freezing but they are actually warm to touch. Neuropathy normally happens gradually, not overnight, and you may not be aware of it, which is why you should check your feet on a daily basis. You may get a cut in your foot or strand in something, and due to the nerve damage, you'll be unaware of it, and if left untreated, can lead to ulceration. The next complication that could affect your feet is your circulation, which is the blood flow to your feet. If your circulation is poor, this is referred to as ischemia. When you attend your foot screening, they will check your pulses, the colour and temperature of your feet and also if you have hair growth. If you have no hair growth on your feet, this is normally indicates you have poor circulation to your feet. You may also be asked if you experience cramps in the back of your legs when walking or pain in your legs at night. These are all indicators of poor blood supply to your feet and legs. If you do get a wound on your foot and you have a poor blood supply, the wound will take longer to heal. The next complication is deformity. This is where you have significant structural deformity to your foot, such as a bunion, which is where the big toe sits at an angle and the joint is enlarged, or a hammer toe, which is a flexion deformity. The toe sits up in a fixed position and cannot be straightened. These deformities can cause problems with shop bought footwear as the shoes can cause rubbing on these joints which may lead to blistering or ulceration.
The next complication is delayed response to infection. This may occur if a person has neuropathy. They may get a wound in their foot that they are unaware of and if left untreated, this wound could become infected. A person with normal sensation in their foot would feel pain or throbbing at the wound site and have the area treated. The last complication is slow wound healing. This is due to poor circulation to your feet, so a wound would be slower to heal. You can minimise the risk to your feet by having good general health. The diabetic nurse specialist will discuss the importance of good control of your diabetes. Having increased awareness of your feet, which is done by checking your feet daily and being aware of any changes to your feet. We will discuss this in the following slides. Smoking can affect the circulation to your feet and if you have reduced circulation, a wound in your foot will take longer to heal. If you are a smoker, try to reduce the amount you smoke to improve your circulation. In the Eat It section, the dietitian has discussed the importance of healthy diet. Taking regular exercise is beneficial if you are a diabetic and this is discussed in the Move It section. If you are starting to take regular exercise, you must make sure your footwear is appropriate and that you break them in gently at home before exercising. If you wear new shoes and start to exercise immediately, you are more likely to experience rubbing from your footwear, which may cause a blister. On this slide are some common myths which you may hear. The first one is, I can't cut my own toenails when I have diabetes. If you have no problems with the circulation to your feet, no neuropathy or sight impairment, you are able to cut your nails yourself or with the help of a family member if you have poor mobility. People who have impaired sensation or poor eyesight should not cut their own toenails, but filing gently should keep the nails short. The second myth is all people with diabetes get gangrene. There are people who do end up with gangrene on their feet, but this is normally caused by a wound left untreated, poor circulation or infection. Regular foot care will hopefully prevent this happening. Myth three is, it's good to paddle at the beach. It is good to paddle in the water at the beach, but you must make sure you wear something on your feet to protect them. If you walk on the sand, it may be very hot, or there may be a sharp object in the sand, such as glass or shells. If you have neuropathy, you may not feel the sand hot and burn the sole of your feet or cause injury to your feet by standing on something sharp. Our next myth is expensive shoes are good shoes. No, not always. It does not matter how expensive a shoe is. The important thing is that the shoe fits you well, which we will discuss in the footwear section later in the session. Finally, ulcers heal better if left open to the fresh air. Our grannies used to tell us to leave a cut open to the air and it will heal up. With diabetes, you're at a higher risk of infection. So if you get a wound in your foot, always cover it with a plaster to prevent dirt getting into it and it becoming infected. You should carry out a daily foot inspection looking at the top, bottom, in between your toes, round about your nails, and you're looking for anything that wasn't there the day before. If you are checking your feet daily, you know what they look like and you should notice any changes such as callus, corns, redness or bruising. If you have callus with bruising below, this could indicate a significant pressure on a certain area of your foot and if not assessed and treated by a podiatrist could lead to tissue damage and ulceration. You also want to check your nails are not too long as they could dig into adjoining toes. You must always be aware of the signs of infection in your feet. These signs are heat, redness, swelling, any unusual odour or discharge. These could be signs of infection in your feet. If you have any of these signs at all, you need to make sure you have it looked at urgently. You should call the podiatry call centre, your GP, 
NHS 24, or if it is at night or over the weekend, you should go to a &E. It's better to have someone look at your feet to see if treatment is required rather than leaving an infection untreated. With diabetes, infection can spread quickly. What you need to do on a daily basis is check your feet. If you can't see the sole of your foot, use a handheld mirror to check them. If you have a mirrored wardrobe, put your foot in front of them to allow you to see the sole of your feet. We discussed earlier cutting your own toenails, and again, as long as you have no complications and do not have poor eyesight, you can cut your own toenails. You should cut straight across, and if there are any sharp edges, file them with an emery board. Do not cut your nails down at an angle, as you may leave a sharp edge which may grow and dig into your skin. This could lead to an ingrown toenail. If you are concerned about cutting your nails, just file them. You should file your nails twice weekly before showering, as the nail is harder and this will keep the length down. Use daily moisturiser or hand cream doesn't matter what kind as long as you're applying it daily. Apply it to the top and the bottom of your foot, round about the tips of your toes and round about your heels, just don't put it between your toes. I've put these pictures up as a guide for you of what not to use on your feet. The first picture you'll see is a razor and on the opposite corner is a ped egg. Both of these will take the hard skin off your feet. The ped egg will do the same thing as the razor, but the only problem is, if you have neuropathy or a lack of feeling to your feet, you might not realise you're cutting too much skin off and cause an ulcer on your foot. The next picture is of different types of files. You may go for a pedicure and these sharp instruments are used to push back the cuticles. You don't want to use any of these instruments as they could leave an area open to infection at the base of your nail. You'll see pictures of a hot water bottle and also a foot spa. The reason I've shown you these is that if you have neuropathy and you put your foot into a foot spa, the water quite often gets warmer and you might not be aware of it and could burn your foot. It's not likely, but there is always the possibility that the water gets a bit too warm. With hot water bottles, I would honestly advise against them. We have had so many patients over the years who have come in with heel ulcers and the reason for this is they've gone to bed at night, put their foot in a hot water bottle and fallen asleep. And if they've got neuropathy, they don't realise it's burning their foot. So please, no hot water bottles in bed. An electric blanket is okay, but before you go into bed, put the electric blanket off to make sure it's not too warm. When you're going on holiday, you might be walking more often than you normally would, as you might want to investigate the area. The terrain may be different, so always make sure when you go on holiday, wherever it may be, you've got appropriate footwear that you've broken in at home before you go. Lots of patients get new shoes, go on holiday and end up with a blister in their foot. So just try and make sure you've broken the shoes in properly. When you're wearing footwear, the best thing to do is wear socks underneath. One, it stops friction, which could lead to blisters, and if your feet are sweating, it absorbs the moisture from your feet. The second picture is a flip-flop. If you're holidaying here in the good weather or going abroad, try to avoid flip-flops, as the post at the toes can cause friction and lead to a blister, which may develop into an ulcer. Sliders are a better option, as they cross over the top of your foot instead of in between your toes. So just think of the footwear you're going to wear when you're on holiday. It doesn't matter what shoes you wear as long as they are appropriate. The other thing to think about is sun cream. A lot of people when they're on holiday lather their bodies with sun cream and forget about their feet because you don't think you're going to get your feet burnt.
But there are a lot of people who end up with a really bad burn on the top of their foot because they're out in the sun with a sandal on and the top of their foot is exposed so they end up with a burn. So again, if you're putting sun cream on, make sure you're applying it all the way down to the tips of your toes. When you're buying new shoes, these are the things you have to think about. The size of the shoe. Does the shoe actually fit? If you have neuropathy, it's better to get your feet measured before you get shoes, just to make sure the shoes actually fit. The style of the shoe should be wide enough deep enough, long enough to accommodate your foot. The reason for this is, if you have hammer toes or bunions, you want to make sure the shoe in depth and width actually accommodates your foot, which helps to prevent any ulceration. If you're buying shoes, try to get a material that is breathable. Leather is the best type of material, but for any shoes that you're buying, just try to make sure the material is breathable. When you're buying shoes, try to make sure they have a retaining medium such as laces, velcro or a buckle. It holds your foot in place so you're less likely to slide up and down and cause shearing to the sole of your foot, which might cause a blister or lead to ulceration. These are just some examples of footwear. The first one is probably the best type of shoe as far as ladies are concerned as it has a buckle, it's deep enough, wide enough, and it doesn't have a high heel. The one to the right hand side at the top is absolutely fine to wear if you're not walking a lot. If you're going to a wedding or going out for the night, you're not walking far, so this type of shoe is fine, but on a day-to-day -day basis, try to wear a sensible shoe to make sure there's plenty of room and you're not shoving your feet into a tight shoe with a high heel. Again, we've discussed the flip-flop. Try to avoid them as much as possible because you will slide up and down in a flip-flop which could cause some shearing. Most men's footwear is appropriate in style, but again, remember to make sure they are wide enough to accommodate your foot. We've got shoes at the bottom with a lace which is ideal, but this style of shoe can be quite rigid and possibly have seams inside which could cause rubbing on your foot. The pink and grey one at the bottom is to show an example of a diabetic trainer. If you have an ulcer and are now intact, you may be measured for footwear. One of our younger patients chose these trainers and it's really just to emphasise that if you get an ulcer, hopefully everything will heal up and settle down. And if you are provided with footwear, the catalogue nowadays is so much better. Diabetic shoes used to be heavy and frumpish, but now they're much more acceptable for patients because the colours and styles are much better. You can self-refer to podiatry. You don't have to wait for your GP to refer you. If you have corns, callus, a bunion or hammer toes you're concerned about, where you feel there is some pressure on an area from your footwear, or you have an ingrown toenail that you're concerned about, you should self-refer. If you have an ulcer or break in your skin, make sure you clean it thoroughly with a handful of salt and warm water and check the water temperature with your elbow as again, if you have neuropathy, you might not realise the water is too hot. You should then put a dry dressing on and contact the podiatry department as soon as you can to be assessed. The call centre number is on the screen. Hopefully with the information we have given you in this session, you will be able to look after your own feet and have happy and healthy feet.